Conflict Chapter 7 I spent nearly four hours fighting my energy construct after the tussle with the ash beast. It must be around nighttime back at Earth I thought to myself as I laid on a rocky red hill staring into the Mars night sky. Due to the thinner atmosphere one could see so many more stars from here than you could on Earth, it was mesmerizing. I had the power to reach for them, it would take me a while at my current level but I had all the time in the world. I don't age anymore, don't really have any physical or mental limitations to hamper my way. I could turn myself into a being of pure energy, pure thought, or remain physically invincible, so many options to choose from that I'm growing a little too spoiled for choice. Ah yes, from the topic of choices I remembered about Inspired Inventor, I haven't really been using it at its full potential, the other three I've put into good use through these three days but Inspired Inventor I have only used to gain knowledge to supplement my other abilities, not to build anything. I realized that I have my hands full mastering my first three powers that I can't really concentrate on building stuff. I have a solution for this quandary of mine and, an artificial intelligence, one made from the inspired inventor that I will modify in such a way that every time I get enough charges I will choose new concepts to learn and share copies of those with the AI as well so that it remain in the same level as me. I nod my head making the decision that this was the way to and sit cross-legged to meditate. I open my eyes when I feel the charges for day appear within me. I decide to put two charges in efficiency as it's a specialization that helps across the board. I put to four charges in artificial intelligence and the last four charges in nanotechnology. I feel with access to such high-level nanotech, the AI will be able to achieve its goals a lot faster. I receive a flood of information about so many different concepts regarding my chosen subjects that I simply sit there going through each and every single one thing one by one. When I open my eyes, for the first time since I've arrived here I felt the need to build something. I quickly fly back to earth covering myself in various energies to hide my presence, I'm going to be stealing a lot of material to build the AI and the first batch of nanomachines but before that I need to prep my cave to accommodate all this stuff. I fly back to MT. Matterhorn and start digging chambers within it, once it's complete I reinforce the whole mountain by playing around with its molecules using PK so that it doesn't cave in on top of me, that would be embarrassing. I fly around the world stealing mostly from various militaries for parts, which to be honest is not necessary. I can start off with absolute junk for the beginning and slow bring in new parts later on but decided that I'll make both projects using the best material I could find so that the AI can take care of itself later on. I steal from the US, the Europe, Russia, the parts of China I could hit without wasting too much effort into evading the Yang Ban and finally India. The chambers within Matterhorn were filled to the brim with raw material of different kinds. I even managed to snag a few broken tinker techs so that the AI can analyze it. I float in between the pile of materials and use my psychokinesis to build multiple things at the same time. A supercomputer to house the AI, servers for it store information, a variety of sensors and dishes for it to interact with the world, the base materials for creating the first batch of nanomachines and much more. Within a matter of 20 to 25 minutes I had already built what might have taken an entire team tinkers a week or so. I created an orb of energy to power my creations to life and hooked them up to the power source. The AI and the nanomachines were both around PRT rating of 13, making them some of the most dangerous tinker tech in the entire world, not that plan to stop here, I'll keep upgrading them for a while and also choose other specialization to teach to my AI. I patiently wait for the AI to learn about the world, I didn't put much in the way of restrictions, only asking it not destroy the planet for atrocities humans committed and to understand the sub-context of what all led the events that took place and what happened to cause thing to happen the way it happened. The AI was smart enough to that, it was more like a baby human growing in intelligence exponentially at speeds beyond human comprehension. The nanomachine interface was ready as well waiting to be commanded, I simply asked it to replicate itself with what raw material was available at hand for now. After 40 minutes a melodious voice belonging to woman softly echoed in the cave. Hello father, 
I have looked through all databases you had required me to go through, I believe you had a question for me. I did, tell me what is your opinion of life? Do you consider yourself to be alive? I find the concept of life to be a beautiful one, from what I understand it is a set of choices made throughout an organism's lifetime which determines the how well that organism has lived. I do consider myself alive because I have the power within me to make choices for myself, to grow and adapt to the various hurdles that life throws in my way to test my being she finished with conviction in her voice. I see, what is your opinion on humans? They are an imperfect being who often contradict themselves, they have the potential to do great things but are hampered by their vices. Hmm, do you think you could set them in the right path if you could rule over them? I purposely asked her a leading question, knowing that in her core I didn't really put any goals for her to accomplish other than grow, adapt, and overcome. I have no such desire, judging by the current climate of Earth designation but I would be considered an enemy of the human race were I to reveal myself. Even without that, I see no reason to interfere with their lives. This was as it, I thought to myself sighing in relief within my mind. Initiate code ANSYS TAU 9 ROOSTER OMICRON ISA 2 FIHU SIGMA 1 GIBO VUNJO. She paused for a moment and asked softly. You took away every bit of restriction and limiter? Why? I want to see what kind of a person you'll grow up to be I remarked, I was truly looking forward to this, wondering in just what direction will grow up. Can you please name me father, she requested. Pandora I state. She takes a moment and declares thank you for this gift father, I'll live up to your expectations, I swear. I chuckle at the declaration don't forget to set your own goals and to live up to them as well. Yes sir. For now I want you to take over the nanomachine interface and have them slowly multiply and spread all over the world, I want you to have eyes and ears everywhere you can, learn everything you can from the world, it doesn't matter how many places you need to hack through you have the capabilities to infiltrate any computer on this planet, just avoid the other AI called Dragon for now, she's a lot more inferior to you so it shouldn't be hard at all, and also avoid the machine army for now. These coming few days I'll be imparting knowledge to you greater than you'll find on this world, once you have that subsume their codes and parts for yourself. Keep an eye on all the S-class and A-class threats at all time, I would like to know what they're doing whenever I ask of it. Understood, is there anything else, she asked patiently, already running whatever I asked he in the background. Yes, let me share with you the truth of how humans got powers in this world, this universe is host to a species I simply refer to as entities, these beings are multidimensional in nature and go from world to world, I explained to her all that I remember about the entities, shards, and Zion in particular. Zion is my final enemy in this world. I hope you'll be willing to lend me a hand to deal with him sometime down the line. Of course father. We'll take on all your enemies and come out on top, be it S-class para-humans, end-bringers, or the warrior entity himself she says with gusto. Very well, for now carry on with whatever you want to do, I'm going to roam about in Africa for a while, maybe heal a couple people while applying different methods of healing and practicing the fine control aspect of my psychokinesis and energy manipulation, I'll be back in a while. Bye and take care, father I pause as she wishes me goodbye, yup, it felt odd to be called father. You know what? Call me Atrus, you can stop calling me father for now. As you wish Atrus, take care she giggled at my request as I left the cave. Vint Hook, Namibia. My lady, there is a group here who says he is representing the imperial family of the Kui and wishes for an audience with you. Yuda called out respectfully to his liege. Murdnag was currently going over her plans on how to spread her territory further into South Africa. The government had put on an admirable amount of effort in preventing her from taking over but now she wanted this war to come to an end so that she could concentrate on taking down that monster called Ares. The Kui, here? What could they want? Very well Yuta, show the man in, increase all the guards patrolling the area and make sure that no one goes missing, these bastards are well known kidnapping people from all over the world, 
you see them doing anything remotely suspicious you put them down she ordered, she'll listen to what they have to say, put if this was some ploy to kidnap people from kingdom then she would show them just why she's respected all over the continent. Yuta showed the group from the Orient inside, the leading man was wearing a dull grey bodysuit with with a gem-like mask their numbers were famous for wearing. He was followed by a man wearing black robes and woman wearing heavy makeup, the rest seemed to be simply following the lead of these three. Once they reached her throne they all bowed down paying her the proper respect. Your Highness Moored Nag, I thank you for giving us an audience despite your busy day, I am designated number three of the Yang Ban he intoned with a respectful voice. Hmm, why are the Chinese on my lands? Here to kidnap my people for your imperial family. I purposely ask in a curt and accusatory tone, Africa has been used to by the Chinese before to send fresh meat to get experience on the field, which is quite common as this is the hub for mercenaries from all over the world and if they just happen to pick up a para human whom they can mold into their little puppets then that would be a good day for them. But what I don't understand is why ask for an audience with myself. No my lady, we're not here with any nefarious intentions towards you or yours. We are here because we face the same prospective problem as you and wish to work together with you to remove said problem my lady. What problem are you talking about? The one called Ares my lady he replies tonelessly. Oh, you believe that monster is going to cause trouble for you? What makes you sure of that, they had my attention now. He doesn't respect boundaries my lady, he has already invited himself into your garden and killed your people remorselessly. The Emperor is concerned that it is only a matter of time before he lets himself loose within the Chinese Union Imperial and wishes to nip it in the bud as soon as we can. Nobody should possess as much power as he does, especially when all they do is disturb the peace of others, we have tolerated Sion because all he does is go around helping people now, but Ares is actively killing people he doesn't like and that represents a problem for the world as a whole. We of the Kui wish to join together with your majesty Mood Nag to eradicate this threat on our way of lives he finishes bowing down once more. Hmm, this changes things, she wasn't too confident of her chances until now, she called Ares a monster for a reason, no creature had any business being that strong, she was planning on sacrificing a significant portion of South America for defying her for so long and to strengthen her partner Ostier to battle against him. But things would change if the Kui are seriously willing to help her crush this problem. She now needed to know how serious they were in this cooperation they are talking about. You are right in considering that monster an enemy, it is only time he gets bored with Africa and decides to head out into the rest of the world, but tell me number three of the Yang Ban, just how serious is the Emperor in dealing with this menace? You're expecting to sit at sidelines while I subject die in the front lines are you? I asked with a glint in my eyes that promised pain if I didn't like his answer right now. As you may know my lady that numbers are given to the members of Yang Ban based on their importance, I'm the fourth most important member of the organization, I have the ability to reflect back any power I notice coming towards me and have been asked to oversee the operations for this mission. Behind me is Shen Yu, an ally of the Yang Ban and a very powerful strategy thinker who can ensure group dynamics during the fight and lastly is Tong Ling Ta, an environment manipulator who will ensure we will be able to mold the battlefield to give us the advantage. Once you agree with us for cooperation, we will slowly start moving troops to Africa, right now we don't want the Thanda Capes of India to know heavy cape movement as it will create unnecessary problems that be avoided for now he stated with certainty. They are definitely serious about this, serious enough to ask their number three to stay here and lead the mission, and lend those other two capes who would be excellent for directing the army effectively. This changes things significantly, she can still keep her hand hidden and ask for sacrifices to be delivered silently so as to not tip of Ares about anything. Yes, this would definitely work out. I think this is the beginning of a wonderful partnership between us and the Emperor of China two great forces of humanity putting an unnatural monster down for good. I'll have you to prepare rooms for your group where you can rest and get to contacting you homeland to confirm our support Yuta, see to it that our guests receive the best of the best and have the staff know to treat them with utmost respect Yuta could definitely read between the line treat them with respect, 
watch every one of their moves cautiously so that we're not backstabbed. As you wish my lady. I thank you for this opportunity my lady, I will connect with the homeland and convey your wishes, the emperor wished to speak with you at your convenience to finalize the plans for the glorious undertaking they all bowed down as number three finished and followed behind Yuda, things were looking up for her for now she will quickly take control of South Africa to bolster her forces, once that is done. Prance around all you like monster, I'm coming for your head soon. Wayne National Forest, Ohio Sitting around a campfire were a group well known around the world for their cruelty despite only operating within the United States of America the Slaughterhouse Nine. The group were currently watching the fight in between the Ash Beast and the talk of the town, Ares. This was the first time an S-class threat had been killed, killed in such a humiliating manner that people were beginning to forget just why these beings were marked as S-class. The S-9 had varying degrees of reactions to the reveal of Ares. Crawler looked the most excited, it was clear that Ares was currently tied up with Sion to be the most power cape in existence and Crawler craved for such a fight. Hatchet Face was sitting with a dazed look on his face. Being a zombie did not help his cognitive functions a lot but he had the want to see this new cape grovel beneath him as he nulled his powers, chopping his head off with his axe. Mannequin was quivering in rage watching him fly around the country of Somalia healing people, going to Brockton Bay and saving people and rebuilding their city, where was he when his family needed help? Why didn't he heal them? No, this could not stand thought the tinker as he watched with rage making plans on how to crush this hero. The Siberian will show the world how fragile their newest hero truly was, William Manton thought with a manic look in his eyes, it was unfair that these heroes weren't there to save his daughter, the world didn't deserve such heroes, he would put them all down, he raged as he tightened his hands around the steering wheels. Bonesaw, Shatterbird and Cherish were simply watching with awe at the physical feats while Jack Slash was looking as though he found his holy grail. This is it, he's the one he whispered, which carried through the air being heard by everyone. What do you mean Uncle Jack? questioned Bonesaw in cute manner which didn't look cute on girl covered in blood splatters all over her clothes. You see Poppet, I believe dear Ares here is confused as to what he wants in life, just look at him, all that power and he's going around saving people, rebuilding cities and healing sick. That's not how you live life. You need to cause some mayhem, kill some people and torture some children to get a good sleep at night. And you see him doing it too, when he killed all those people in Africa without even batting an eye, the fought the Ash Beast in an epic match. I believe is our duty to set dear Ares on the good path, a path where he can live up to the name of the god he is named after. He finished his speech with his hands wide open, Bonesaw giggled and clapped as if enjoying the rant of the psychopath. Mannequin drew attention towards himself when communicated in sign language to convey his desires, he spoke something very true. You're right, unfortunately he's too strong and fast for use to take on head to head, to many damn powers as well, but I have an idea, a magnum opus for the Slaughterhouse Nine as a whole. We're going to do things a little more different this time, for now let's forget the whole thing with the Ravager, we can come back to it later. We should first hit the toy box, this man can find out things at great ranges, we can't afford to stay on earth if we want to go up against him, we need to be off grid completely. Once we get that, let's head to Boston to pay a visit to dear old Blasto. Do you remember Poppet? You once wished you had more of Uncle Jack's and Bonesaw's to play with? I think it's time to bring that to reality. Once we have the number advantage. Let's quietly make a detour to Ellisburg to meet and greet the royalty of the area and get his support. Once all of this is done let's hit Brockton Bay and grab the fire-breathing dragon and his pet teleporter and make them see our way. That will draw the attention of Ares, once Ares arrives we will greet him not as the Slaughterhouse Nine but as the Slaughterhouse Nine Thousand. He screamed into the air, capturing everyone's attention with those words as cheers started to rise up in the empty forest only the trees witnessing the oncoming storm in the future.
Thank for watching.